In our last program, the electrolysis of aqueous solutions of sodium chloride, we look at the effect of the E of the half cell as well as solution concentration in terms of what reactions would take place at each electrode. In this program, we'll take a look at how the nature of the electrode itself can alter the reaction. So in my first example, I'm going to look at the electrolysis of a copper sulfate solution. So down in here, we'll have copper ions, sulfate ions, and water itself. And our electrodes will be made out of an inert material, say it could be carbon or platinum. And being inert, they're not going to get involved in the reaction. So hooking up the terminals of my battery, the negative terminal is over on this side, so electrons will move down in this direction, so reduction will occur over here. Um, this then will be my cathode, and attracted to it will be the copper, ion, and as we saw in our last program, water itself could also gain electrons. And those two reactions are written here. As we learned in the last program, the more positive value of the two is likely to be selected. So we're going to see the deposition of copper ions turning into solid copper. And at this surface, we would see it grow as copper started to plate onto the surface. Over here at the other electrode, which is hooked up to the positive terminal, electrons will be drawn up in this direction, hence we're losing electrons on this side. So this side's undergoing oxidation, and that occurs always at the anode. So here are two candidates for reactions at this site, the sulfate ion, and again, as we saw in our last program, water is also capable of losing electrons. Now the sulfate ion is a very stable polyatomic ion and as such it's highly unlikely it's going to give up those electrons so we're going to take it out of the mix leaving us really with only this possible reaction at the anode. We're going to see the evolution of bubbles of oxygen gas rising up through our liquid and coming out here. So my overall reaction then, summing the two together that I have the check marks with and ensuring that the electrons lost and gained are similar, my overall reaction then will be copper ions plus a water molecule, uh, single water molecule. That's going to produce two hydrogen ions, oxygen gas, and solid copper. And the minimum energy requirement for this reaction, taking these two values into account, negative 0.89 volts. So our battery needs to supply a voltage that will exceed that. So perhaps somewhere around 0.9 volts, if not higher, um, to encourage this reaction along. So we can see here with inert electrodes, we get the production of solid copper at one electrode and oxygen gas at the other. In my next example, I'm going to replace the inert electrodes with copper electrodes. So now we will have copper here and copper here, and we'll hook them up just as we did before the negative side electrons moving over here. This will be my cathode. Electrons coming up on this side, drawn into the positive terminal, and this will be my anode. So over at this side then, we'll still have our copper ions potentially coming over here. Our water molecule will be potentially migrating over here. And we also have the copper itself potentially gaining electrons all over here. So I've listed those reactions here. Now, a little examination here. Copper gaining electrons. That would then require the formation of a copper negative ion. Uh, metals don't tend to gain electrons. They tend to lose them. So this is really unlikely to happen. So I'm going to take it away from the mix of possible reactions and again 
going by selective discharge, the one with the higher positive value, is likely to take place. So over on this copper electrode, I would see the deposition of more copper. So copper would start to form on the surface. Over at this electrode, again I have the sulfate ion, and as before it's very stable and not likely to give electrons. Our water molecule could give away electrons, and that's indeed what happened in our last example. But we also have now copper. Copper has the ability to lose electrons being a metal. And as we can see from this one, it's got a more positive value than our oxygen reaction. So this is what's going to happen here. We're actually going to see this copper dissolving and forming more copper ions. So the net movement is copper from this side over to this side. This is process is used to purify copper. So if we start with, say, a copper um, plate that might be somewhere around 90% copper, only the copper ions will undergo this migration over to this side, and I'll now end up with something that's 99% copper over on this plate. So this is used in the refining and purification of copper. 